Welcome to the Viscom 4 Photoshop lecture. In this presentation, we will look at using Photoshop to create renderings of your conceptual sketches. As we examine different digital media, Photoshop will be reintroduced with SketchUp, Revit, and other visual communication tools to build upon the techniques and graphics throughout this course. Based on your introductions, most students in this course have never used Photoshop. So we'll start with some of the basics and continue to add information. Let's take a look at deciding on your image size. You can open any raster image like a JPEG, bitmap, or PDF, and then go to image, drop down, and down to image size. Here you'll see that the quality for printing is a resolution of 300. The higher the resolution, the bigger the file size. But a general rule is to use a resolution of 300 pixels per inch for printing and 72 for web or on-screen viewing. Resolution refers to the number of small squares or pixels in your image. When you increase the resolution, you are increasing the pixels along the width and height of the image. Notice when I change the resolution to 72, the pixels automatically change and so does the file size. It becomes a lot smaller. Also, if you can avoid bitmap files which give us a headache and lots of crashes. Try to um, use a JPEG, PDF, or other image file. When I try to select a bitmap image, I get a dialog box that says that it only will accept a grayscale mode. If I go up to image mode, we should be able to use the RGB color mode, which is what we'll see in other images that are not bitmaps, like this JPEG file. If I go to image mode, here's our RGB color, which will give us all the swatches and, and the flexibility in our presentations. I'm going to try to streamline the basics this week, giving you the tools you need to render your project. And then in the following weeks, we'll talk about using things like the mini bridge, converting images to to sketches and rendering techniques with digital media. Looking at this quick rendering that I worked with based on a sketch that I did in Chicago when I lived there. In fact, there's my hand right there. And this was drawn in a large sketchbook. I was able to, in a quick way, bring in layers. If you look over here to the right, you'll see that we can create several layers. So here's the sky. I can turn it on and off by picking this small eye icon. I have kind of a double layer there of a gradient fill and this image. And also the reflection of the skyline there. I copied using Control C and then Control V to paste this skyline and then flipped it into the water and change the opacity of it and then blurring the image with some of the other tools called blur the blur tool that's in here the filter drop down and then adding some noise to the water to give it the appearance of movement as I turn on and off these layers you can see these smaller changes. Of course, this drawing isn't done. There's more to add, but I wanted to show you these, these layers. And also, if I add an adjustment layer up here in this menu for brightness and contrast, an entire layer will be overlaid and on top of the rest. So they go in order from the ones at the bottom to the ones at the top. And so if I change my brightness, I'll be able to 
create a night scene and maybe if I turn off the sky and bring the brightness down even more and change the contrast it starts to look like a night scene. I would probably change the opacity of this this yellow so that it kind of fades in and is highlighted on the concrete a little bit more. And once you work with several tools you can use Control Z to do an undo or you can click on this history panel and step back here in time with what your commands are and then move forward just by clicking on the different changes. If you use Control Alt Z you can then use your keyboard shortcuts for undoing by holding Control Alt Z. I like to use the history panel because you can actually see the change from one to another but once you save it it does here by default take this history uh, away. So let's get started. You have a choice of making a copy of your original file to preserve it and opening the copied file or start with a new Photoshop file and then copy paste your file into it. We'll start with an example of opening up the copied scan sketch. If you go to image and image size you can change the resolution to 72 making it easier to post it on Blackboard. We can go ahead and pick OK. If you rest your mouse button on an icon you can see what the tool is and see what the letter is to get to it. So you could actually type in Z and then in this options bar at the top you'll have here the little plus and minus zoom controls. That works great if you don't have a mouse with the wheel on it. If we go to edit and down to preferences and over to general or control K for those of you who like to use quick keys, in this dialog box you can put a check mark in front of zoom with scroll wheel. That actually should be the default in my opinion and it's worth the investment to have a wheel on your mouse. It's used in all of the 3D modeling software it seems. So let's go ahead and put a check mark in here zoom with scroll wheel. Uh, down in the interface preference you can change the the color of the interface if you'd like. Under file handling you can change the automatic saves here every 10 minutes as the, as the default. And then down here by the rulers, uh, units and rulers, you can change from inches to millimeters if you're going to go with the metric. I'll go ahead and pick OK. And now I can use the wheel of my mouse to at least zoom up and down. Once you get close enough, you can hold your space bar to pan using the left mouse button if you need to. Okay. So we have this layer called background. We'll need to unlock it in order to work with it. One way to unlock a layer is to double click on it and pick OK or you can hold your left mouse button down right over the lock and just drag it to the trash can here at the bottom right corner and now it becomes layer 0. We should rename this layer so we can double click on that layer and call it background so that this becomes the layer that doesn't get changed at all. We can then highlight the layer, right click and pick duplicate layer and then create another one here that could be called cleanup and pick OK. So on this cleanup layer we can highlight and over here let's take a look at changing the color to white so that we can paint over the top of some of this text. The eyedropper tool is used to pick up color from the swatches. You can either hold your left mouse button down on an icon or you can right click. If you just select it, it 
doesn't give you the menu. So if you right click, you can pick eyedropper tool and you'll see that I is actually the type in if you like to type in your quick keys. So once you have the eyedropper, you can come over to the swatches in this right hand side panel and pick up here the color white. You'll see that it sets the foreground color here at the bottom left and now we can establish a brush tool and also here's B for the type in. With the brush tool you have a choice of using the bracket keys that are to the, just to the right of the letter P on the keyboard to make your brush larger and smaller or you can use this drop down here in the options panel at the top so you can change the size here by using this slide bar and you can change the hardness so this first brush is soft and the second one is um, here has that hardness to it not as blurred or soft at the top right under settings this by default would be the smaller uh, thumbnails you can change this to stroke thumb thumbnails if you'd like to see here what the strokes really look like and make this dialog box even bigger so we have some interesting patterns here to use with the brush this uh, these blades of grass of which you can change the brush size or these um, maple leaves that will create a string of maple leaves along um, your brush stroke. If you go back to settings here at the top right corner, you have other brushes that you can load that can be appended to these or replaced, pla replacing them. Either way, you can always reset the brushes back th to the default. So if I wanted to pick up a few of the natural brushes, I have a choice here to pick OK to replace them or I'm going to go ahead and pick a pen and so it adds even more brush strokes that I can use as I'm rendering. We can also name the brushes so if you have a favorite one you'd like to name it so that it's easier to find. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this dialog box. So I used the eyedropper to pick up the color and now I've gone to the brush tool and I'm on a different layer so now I can start to draw over the top of this text. What I have though is I've changed the opacity in an earlier example so I'll change the opacity back to 100% um, giving us the full strength here of that stroke. Also we have a pencil tool that we can use to clean up these lines that are not extended so that when we fill the the boundaries and add color we won't have large gaps. Just an added note about the eyedropper for picking up color in the existing file or going over to a different file and picking up those colors we can use the eyedropper. Most tools like the brush tool or the pencil tool will allow you to bypass that extra step of using the eyedropper because you can immediately go to the swatches from that tool. So within the video you can save a step and go directly to the color swatches as an option. Because I'm going to draw a straight line here I need to go back and pick up the color black. I can go to the eyedropper and come over here and maybe pick a different gray color. I can even pick inside this file to pick up the color. So here I'll just pick a, a gray color and now with the pencil tool which is right underneath the brush if you pick a point and hold your shift key down you can let go of your mouse button, pull your mouse over, hold your shift key down and pick and draw here a straight line. So I'm going to select a, line, a point here, hold my shift key down and pick a point to draw a straight line. Now we can 
fix this up you know, later on. But I would like to show you here that um, we do have pencils and brushes that we can use. And new to Photoshop CS6 is the Spot Healing Brush, which actually takes the surrounding color and cleans up your drawing with that color. Before we start drawing uh, too many objects and like the sky and the grass, let's create here another layer. We can right click with your pointer on that cleanup layer and type in here um, as an example grass and pick OK. We're going to use the quick selection tool that's located on the left side here. With the quick selection tool, you can hold your left mouse button down and um, drag your mouse across, or in this case, just select inside this area and it automatically will pick up this, this selection, this closed boundary. Up in the panel, you'll have the brush that adds and a brush that subtracts. So I didn't want these areas selected to work with so I'm taking them out of the selection and I have just this bottom part. So now I'm ready to use the eyedropper to pick up a dark gray color and as a choice you can use the brush tool to brush here some of that color into your selection. Notice if I increase the brush, as long as I'm painting here inside the selection, notice that it won't paint outside of the selection. It's a perfect way to form an edge here when you are adding color. With this selection, I can also use the gradient tool and change the opacity to 100% and I've also verified that I'm using the linear gradient gradient although in this example uh, we could use reflective gradient but I'll use linear and now where you select is um, where it will be white so working with this a little bit you can start to select closer to your image and further away to get white or um, here use the first point that you pick you hold your left mouse button down and you'll start to find here the right gradient that you'd like for that base Changing the color using the eyedropper, you can then use your brushes to determine what kind of brush might look good with the pattern that you're establishing. So you can start to experiment with different brushes and uh, colors to create your your grass and also in this left toolbar you have the dodge tool which will lighten it up a little bit and the burn tool the burn tool gives it a nice kind of darker version of whatever color you're using sort of like it's burning it into um, the paper <laughs> and the dodge tool actually lightens it up a little. You can see that as I'm going across some of this, it's kind of brightening it up a little bit at the top of the blades of grass as um, I start to establish this um, this grass at the at the bottom. When I lived in Paris and I visited the Villa Sauvage several times. Uh, the grass was well maintained and wouldn't look like this. So now we can use Control D to deselect this area or you can right click and pick deselect. Remember that you have this history that you can go back and undo 
several times.